with the same ladies and gentlemen with a huge round of applause allow me to welcome our panelists please welcome ms hema malik chief investment officer media brands india let's welcome mr pudit bekal director marketing mastercard samir sethi vice president and head of brand marketing policybazaar.com and mr ujwal sinha director marketing cast 24 and let's welcome our moderator for this session please uh, welcome mr lloyd mathias uh, business strategist and angel investor uh, good afternoon everyone and uh, thank you for your attention with the last session i understand between you and lunch so i promise we won't keep you long uh, despite a little delay uh, what we here to discuss is really the impact and uh, you know what sports means as a media property uh, for various brands and specifically in the context of cricket given the fact that cricket overrides uh, most sports in the country and we have a very interesting panel so starting from the extreme left uh, there's hema from ipg media brands uh, she buys media for a range of clients ranging from samsung tata motors uh, yeah you know the emirates aramco so we'll get a great perspective from her uh, then we've got puneet from mastercard and mastercard have been uh, should we say long time uh, sponsors of sport specifically cricket in the context of india besides what they do with fifa and soccer worldwide so i think that's interesting uh, we have samir from policy bazaar and uh, they again have been huge uh, you know kind of sponsors of cricket and sports on television in general uh given the category and the you know the huge growth that policy bazaar has seen and of course to my immediate left is ujwal from cast 24 another big user of sport marketing in general and uh, cricket and specifically the ipl in particular before we get down to the discussion just a couple of contextual points i think you have to recognize that you know india as a country has about 950 million television homes linear television people with you know some form of television so saying that's a big number and as per data about 720 million in the last one year have watched some sport on television so predominantly i would think cricket would be the dominant part so in a sense linear television is still shall we say the dominant reach medium when it comes to sports in the country i think that's one critical part obviously one is seeing growth in properties cricket uh, various levels right from bilateral cricket to tri series to international cricket to the uh, icc world cups various formats the odi the t20 various formats and one is also seeing the huge growth of ipl that's been another significant growth so even in the context of uh, something like the ipl we're talking about 420 million odd users right so that's remarkably large and even as other categories of uh, live sport grows ott i think linear television or television in general is too big to ignore and what i'm hoping to do in this in the next 35 40 minutes is get a sense from each of our uh, colleagues here in terms of how they use this medium and how critical is it to their marketing plans so maybe i'll start with puneet and uh, you know try and get a sense of mastercard i know that you guys have been uh, you know taken a deep position on cricket for i think at least the last decade and you also sponsor all the in home bilateral series so any country that comes to play india in india mastercard is the title sponsor but besides a tie up with the bcci i also understand that you guys have a very strong position on television sponsorship to leverage your sponsorship so we want to understand from you one is why the deep interest in cricket how does it meet your brand objectives and two what are the interesting things you do to leverage a mastercard association sure so uh, uh, you know we've been associated with cricket for the past 4 years uh, mike isn't working you are trying to sleep check check okay so uh, it's been 4 years that we've been associated with cricket uh, since uh, we signed on our legendary ambassador dhoni uh, we've been sponsoring cricket uh, across sponsorship both on ground on, on on air okay and what you realize just to add to your points lloyd uh, out of those 700 million uh, consumers who consume sport in india approximately 630 million uh, consume cricket 
And there was a recent uh, survey done uh, by, uh, I don't know the name of the institute, uh, but 83% of people uh, would prefer to watch or consume cricket on large screen. The reason is because uh, one is it's fun to watch and experience cricket on a large screen. Uh, mobile screens are too distract. distract I mean, there's a lot of distraction when you watch uh, live cricket on mobile because it's screen on screen, notification. And uh, this is one sport uh, where, uh, you know, it's where you form a rare occasion within the family where you watch the, the sport together with your friends and family. So hence the attention, attention uh, which you get uh, while you're consuming cricket is much higher and hence TV is a preferred medium from that perspective. Uh, to add to uh, a few more points on this, uh, TV is still today considered as the most trusted medium. Uh, in fact, TV ads is still the number one choice across brands uh, to build a positive impression and uh, possibly uh, the, t uh, the weightage is given by the consumer when he or she sees a TV ad is similar to the weightage given to a recommendation by a friend or a family. So uh, it's a brand safe environment uh, uh, plus the scale which cricket brings to the table and higher attention span all put together uh, I think is a great place for any brand to be part of the cricketing ecosystem. So uh, I think uh, we are deeply committed to uh, sports in general and cricket obviously uh, there on. Thanks Pudi, that, that makes good sense. I'll just come across to Samir. And Samir, in your category, which is uh, insurance and policy bazaar, you all have pretty dramatic seasonality, so to speak, right? So the Jan, Feb, March quarter is obviously a peak quarter as the year ending. And obviously, April onwards is when the low starts and builds up. But you guys have also been very, very big, uh, actively involved with cricket as a television sponsor. I understand that you've been you know, one of the prime sponsors of the IPL as far as television goes. So why don't you talk us through a little bit of you know, how Policy Bazaar leverages cricket for maximum impact. Sure. Thanks, Lloyd. Um, so I think fundamentally, everybody is aware of the basic uh, facts about uh, cricket as a medium, it is, a, it is the single largest aggregator of audiences in India, everybody knows about that. Uh, it is also the biggest accumulator of male audiences, if certain categories want to advertise to those audiences. Uh, there's unlike, uh, you know, it's unlike anything else available on uh, television. What's a slightly less talked about fact is that, uh, you know, cricket could possibly be for a whole range of brands irrespective of how, of how big or small their marketing budgets are, whether or not they operate in one corner of the country or nationwide. I'll give you a small example. So, say for example, a tournament like IPL. If you're a mass value brand, you can either just pick up the standard definition feed or you can just pick up the Hindi feed. If you're a player operating predominantly in, let's say, Tamil Nadu, you can just pick up the, the Tamil feed, which is not just, uh, you know, uh, uh, another feed uh, in terms of just commenting. Uh, I believe the entire region's uh, broadcast is packaged separately. So those viewers are equally engaged as much as Hindi or English viewers are. If, on the other hand, you're a very uh, niche premium player, you can choose to pick up either the English feed or you can uh, pick up, uh, let's say, only the high definition feed. So there is something in it for all sorts of advertisers. I'll give you an example from Policy Bazaar's point of view. So currently we operate at a relatively larger scale than we did, let's say, seven, eight years ago. So I remember 2015 World Cup, I was still with Policy Bazaar then and I was, uh, you know, we were discussing whether or not to invest in the World Cup. This, if we did, would be back then the biggest bet we would have taken on cricket. Uh, the budgets were relatively limited compared to right now. And uh, we thought, you know, the, the tournament is, is uh, potentially too big and engaged to miss. So instead of, uh, you know, having little presence across the entire breadth of the tournament, we decided to have a relatively more prominent presence just on the high definition feed so that you don't get lost in the clutter of multiple brands advertising at the same time. 
uh, but you also reach out to a very quality audience and you engage them in a way that no other tournament can offer that uh, chance uh, to, to engage you, uh, to engage them in. So, yeah, I, I think it's a, it's, it's a myth that you can't really uh, do customized targeting on linear TV. You just have to find ways around it. Thanks, Samir. I think that's a great perspective that, you know, as much as one talks about the advantages of personalization uh, in the context of digital, I think uh, plain old-fashioned linear TV in its own way gives you the opportunity to pinpoint your targets by language feeds, by HD, by various formats. And I think that's, that's a great point. I'm going to come back to some of the other points you made, which was about saturating a medium, taking, let's say, one feed and, you know, ensuring you have quality presence as opposed to spraying... Uh, you know, relatively thin around, and we'll certainly come back to that. But I want to go across to uh, Hema now, because she buys cricket for a multiplicity of brands, her company does. And uh, I want to understand a little bit of the thinking and the process that, that you go through when you're recommending a relatively mass, but also a high outlay uh, property like cricket. Right? And in the context of, say, Samsung or Tata Motors or some of the large players. And I noticed that you know, a lot of, lot of the brands that uh, in, 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 in IPG Media Brands portfolio have used cricket extensively uh, over the last few years. So maybe, Hema, you can talk us through some of the experiences and how it's worked. Thanks. So first, I think I just want to add very interesting. So uh, Puneet spoke about uh, how we want to watch sports on large screens. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. So just uh, before I answer, can you hear me? Is it okay? Yeah. Can you hear? Okay. So uh, uh, Puneet, you spoke about that sports. Uh, people love to watch sports on large screen, and uh, very interesting for one of our clients who are into color te uh, television as a category. And there were always blips in the sale when there used to be large sporting events, be it World Cup or be it IPL. Uh, that's when the sales picked up because that's when people want to, you know, invest in a good experience to watch sports. So that's very true and that's one of the added reasons why TV makes a lot of sense. And uh, adding to Sami's point, of course, it's the largest aggregator and therefore all clients. Our experience, you know, my personal experience on uh, different categories uh, at different life stages. So when I talk about categories, I'm talking about established large beverage category, which is like highly penetrated categories, to categories which are tech categories, but large, large players and established players, to new age categories, which are maybe, you know, digital payment or other such categories. Uh, cricket has a role to play for each one of them in different ways. So it is not uh, typically seen as a quick reach and a build brand awareness, building brand awareness platform, but I think its role is much beyond that. Uh, when cricket happens, when IPL happens, there is no escape. If, you, if you're advertising, I mean, all data points, especially if you're talking to a certain set of audiences, and if you're not talking to people who are non-prime time viewers, uh, absolutely, there is no escape that you can uh, miss IPL. And that clearly builds a very strong case for uh, IPL or for any other uh, sports, uh, for cricket especially. Uh, the numbers are huge. The numbers, uh, I mean, your top 50 programs during IPL will be only IPL matches. I mean, maybe somewhere in a 51st or a 52nd program could be a regional program. So that's the power of uh, cricket. And... Uh, the combined power of, uh, the combined reach of any uh, high impact shows, which also comes at a premium, you know, uh, comes close to what IPL can get you. So clearly the number is a big uh, reason for all our clients to believe in the power of cricket on television. And as I said that uh, uh, various categories, I think what is very critical for us, what we see is that you need to be very clear on why you're getting into IPL or why you're taking into the, uh, investing that level of monies because uh, uh, if you're clear on your role, whether you want to talk about a new news, you want to build brand awareness or you want to have a regional focus or engagements because I feel Disney Star has done a fantastic job of uh, grooming the platform, uh, the kind of investments that they have made behind uh, making it multilingual. I mean, the power of uh, it's a it's a national. It's the only 
uh, platform which is national and uh, there is no other platform or content that can you know get the entire country together so but within that national platform how have they figured out geographical solutions by giving language feeds by giving uh, local uh, uh, brand ambassadors or local assets in terms of commentary i think that allows a lot of brands especially which are into a portfolio i mean i don't want to name my clients but they are clients and they the entire portfolio can leverage this solution so beautifully by you know looking at uh, specific brands being played in certain markets so there is a certain way we look at clients which have a single product and there to advertise or there is a certain way that we look at clients which have a huge portfolio and how entire portfolio can have focused customized solutions for each geography which is an offer that uh, you know uh, ipl gives us so yes absolutely i mean our experience uh, and we we've, we've measured it very clearly we have i think very important for all clients to ensure that there is a measurement matrix either uh, you know they should do their own or be in partnership with star but clearly go in with an objective what is the needle that you want to move and do measure the effect of that and we have seen good results as i said different categories different life stages of category but there is a needle that moves provided uh, your uh, your problem identification and your solution is is in line yeah great so short point cricket moves the needle absolutely it has reach it has impact it has scale and also i think what you're calling out is the fact that there are relatively customized solutions yes. so if you want to reach a distinctive geography or a distinctive set of audiences you can get there so so i think point well taken coming to you ujwal and you know uh, i know cast 24 has uh, you know grown phenomenally in the last 7 years and i think cricket has been your primary property yeah. uh, brand property both yes. the on air is to some extent on ground as well yes. so when you talk us through your experience of uh, you know how you guys have leveraged uh, cricket and uh, you know some of the unique instances when it's possibly helped you all get an edge over your other competitors sure thanks lloyd uh you know i think uh, puneet and samir spoke about the reach of television and uh, the viewership that cricket gets there right so around 80% of people who are on tv do get in touch with cricket and you know when you look at the car market today auto market uh, i think roughly one out of 12 households have a car so the headroom to grow is huge you know and that is where you want to reach out to the masses right and that is where you feel cricket is your best bet considering you know the tg of automobile has a very good overlap with cricket tg little but thankfully we are seeing positive signs of that interest coming back the last two tournaments uh, including the icc t20 and uh, the bilateral before that uh, both of these tournaments rated very well uh, this also gives us a chance uh, to you know also reach out to a lot of these audiences uh, throughout the year we are not just dependent on the ipl period being the sole uh, cricket tournament happening which is a great thing for us because we're a, we're not a seasonal advertiser we advertise throughout the year and like you said it is to flatten out uh, you know the the lowering demand curve because two of our core categories are term insurance and health insurance both of these are uh, relatively low demand categories so a lot of advertising we do is to create new demand uh and while obviously uh, the efforts uh, are more fruitful during the season but you have to still keep on doing it rest of the year as well because you need to create that demand it's a very very low penetration category i'd also like to add one point uh, uh, to what puneet uh, mentioned about uh, you know owning the entire tournament looking at on ground looking at on air etc uh so what uh, policy bazaar has done very consistently is broadcast advertising we have done a lot of fct advertising and there is a very uh, fundamental objective behind it see we are operating in a very low demand category we are trying to convince people that hey you need health insurance you should buy it you need term insurance for your family you should buy it we are trying to convince people to enter the category we are trying to convey the relevance of the category to them to be able to do that uh, the audio visual format works best for us storytelling is not possible on a static logo print uh thankfully for us we are also not operating in a very heavily competitive category if we were we would also be advertising a lot on ground 
to be able to build a higher recall versus the competitor to gain an edge over there. Uh, uh, but, you know, thankfully we're not. So we're just advertising a lot on uh, FCT. We're doing a lot of storytelling and that happens throughout the year because we've clearly seen if we stop advertising, the demand sort of, uh, in, a, in a very immediate manner, it starts to go down. So overall advertising, yes. And cricket, I think, is, is like a cherry on the cake. It, it uh, adds a, a significant chunk to the overall GRPs that you were getting in the plan anyway. Uh, so, so yeah, IPL is important, will continue to be important while it's slightly off the season. Uh, but I'm sure uh, all the other relatively smaller cricket tournaments are equally important. Fantastic. Great answer, Sabi. Thank you. Uh, the kind of elephant in the room, and you know, one must address it, we're in peak uh, FIFA peak. Uh, FIFA season, right? And uh, lots of people are taking a fair amount of football. And one expects that this very niche audience grows through the course of this tournament, especially when the knockouts happen, right? So, I, of course, a lot of the timings match Indian time. Being in Qatar, you know, there's a 9.30 game, there's a 12.30 game. I uh, want to get across to both uh, Puneet, you and, and Hema. Understanding, do you all, is there a belief that other sports are really an option to cricket, right? One has seen in the last, uh, say, decade or so, uh, growth of other leagues, right? There's the India Soccer League, there's the PKL, the Premier Kabaddi League, you've got badminton now, you've even got a chess league going, uh, various, various formats. To what extent are other sports uh, a viable property for brands, right? Maybe brands that can't afford big ticket cricket spends, do you see brands building sizable, you know, recall, sizable impact by taking a deep position into other sports? Maybe you want to start, Puneet, and then I'll have Hema. Yeah, so uh, we, we've been doing and listening, uh, uh, doing a social listening exercise for almost 12 months. Mm -hmm. and, the tool, and the key to the tool is to figure out uh, and pick up conversations which are consistent with volumes. And the reason why we're doing this is to understand in our target audience, which are the factors which will, uh, which is the most talked about and which, which where the audience are uh, most passionate about. And over the past 12 months, there are three buckets which we have found. Uh, the first bucket is women empowerment. There's a lot of conversations about women empowerment. The second bucket is uh, Pride of India. Uh, and this is where uh, sports come in, you know. The entire uh, point of uh, Indians representing uh, uh, India on a global stage, which is Olympic sports, which is sports like badminton, uh, uh, that is when you see a lot of conversations and a lot of affinity from the audience and support towards these uh, sports uh, person. The Neera Chopra phenomena. The Neera Chopra, the Lakshya Sen, for example, is world number five now as we speak. Uh, and the Himadas and you know the the the, the entire uh, non-cricketing world, if I may say so. From that point of view, uh, we have a, a lot of associations, and we will you will see a lot of associations from Mastercard uh, supporting uh, sports outside of cricket, uh, purely because it is data proves that uh, there is a sense of cultural homecoming, if I may say so. Uh, you know uh, that's uh, uh, that's that especially the younger millennials uh, feel. Uh, this vibe which we today uh, see, which was not the case possibly four years back. Great. Hema, just a, yeah, a, your perspective on, on this, yeah. other so, sports. Uh, uh, yes, uh, there is definitely a, a role that other sports, emerging sports uh, play. Uh, depending on what your requirement is and what are you chasing. If you're chasing reach, may not be, an answer may not be yes. But, uh, you know, if you're looking for a passionate set of audiences, if you're looking for a specific set of audiences, definitely, whether it's football or kabaddi, are talking to quite a different audiences. But yes, they both have a huge potential to, uh, for brands to, and in the long run, I think this is the right time because they are emerging as we call them. Uh, it makes immense sense to associate with them right now before they get crowded like cricket and uh, be associated with it. Uh, like we always used to say, you know, uh, there was a time in our media strategy presentation, we used to tell our clients own cricket and be dominant. I don't think so anybody can own cricket and be dominant because it's so huge and it's so expensive. But I think that opportunity lies in the other sports, which uh, if you're targeting youth, 
while they IPL may give you numbers, but yes, at the same time, the audience that you will get in FIFA will be a different and a focused set of audiences. And they see your brand also in a different line when they see your brand in that environment versus when they see it in a mass environment. So uh, yes, there is there is scope, uh, provided you are not reaching uh, chasing reach numbers. Yeah. Yeah. So I think a key takeaway we are seeing there is that you're saying there is scope for it, niche. Uh, for other sports as well. And I would say the other thing as you know, in my experience in, in the marketing space, is also that brands want to be in a, in a positive environment. And sports, cricket of course, because of its sheer scale, but sports in general is a much more positive place to be, uh, as opposed to be, uh, shall we say, relatively more toxic uh, environments. And one is, you know, and that, that begets the next, the last question if I may, uh, in the context of uh, Twitter and toxicity. And I want to get your thoughts, uh, Samir, briefly on the fact that sports provides a very safe, positive environment, right? When people are, shall we say, not really in a controversial, family sitting you know, around, I... enjoying sport, uh, having fun, you know, snacking and doing the good things. Uh, there have been properties sometimes that peak, but many brands don't feel very comfortable, right? Deuce is once a genre sometimes, and, uh, you know, I know the big spikes, I've been involved myself in the past during counting days of election. But there are brands that stay off it, saying that this is not the best environment. How do you guys see, you know, other spikes that come in, which are outside of cricket and the sporting genre? And even though they might give you huge amount of uh, eyeballs. I, I completely agree. I couldn't agree more. I think uh, when a brand scales beyond a certain point, uh, the ability to take risks uh, decreases from a media point of view. Which is why we obviously like to operate purely in a brand safe environment. Cricket... Uh, cricket is largely and I think almost entirely a very brand safe environment. We have, uh, you know, seen globally a uh, very, very few controversies around football, etc. here and there. Not very commonplace, very isolated, but we've seen those. With cricket, it's, it's been fairly consistent. It's a, it's a very positive sentiment around cricket. I think uh, brands generally would like to be associated with, with very positive sentiments because it drops off. And, uh, you know, also with, uh, with leader brands in their respective categories, it is expected uh for them to you know operate in a lot of uh, very big tournaments uh, because a lot of times when you do it very very consistently the audience also start expecting you to be there and if you do it over a period of time you you form a bond because of these these are repeat audiences day in day out you, you you'll be able to build a recall that somebody who's off cricket won't be able to because you know like we said it's happening throughout the year Great. And this that last point, uh, just to bring you in, which, which well, is that the context of, uh, you know, cricket being a good brand safe environment, I think and the other exposure that brands take is with ambassadors. You guys have, I think, MS Dhoni uh, for quite a while right now. And is that also a concern that now and then if the ambassador gets into a controversy, what happens to us? Do you all kind of have a little watch out on that front? Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, that, that can be a deterrent at times. Goes with the turf. Yes. It does. And so you, of course, like Sami said, you, when, when brands become big, they want to play safe a little bit there. And that's why I think, you know, MS is, is I think, the safest bet that we can have. And, and of course, you know, it's, it's not only that. They, they get some real good stuff also with them, right? Uh, you have a cricketer for a brand ambassador, you know, he's got a national appeal. You don't have to go for regional stars. So I think uh, that also plays in the favor. Fantastic. Thank you. That's been a a wonderful discussion. Uh, thanks, uh, Pema, Puneet, Sameer, and Ujwal. I don't Thank think we have, we have time for questions, so I, I, I believe presume... due to the paucity of time, uh, we won't be able Thank to you, take sir. any questions as of now. But feel free to contact our panelists off the record, maybe for the same. Thank and you. with the same, I'd like to thank you all and offer my sincerest apologies for the slight technical issues. With the same, can we please have you all in the front for a group picture? And I'd like to request Mr. Shalini Shankar, National Head, Business Development, Laksha Media Group, and Mr. Atul Bhalla, Vice President, 
Lakshya Media Group to kindly join us on the stage to present a small token of appreciation to the moderator and our panelists. Thank you so very much for a rather interesting session and for a lively discussion. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you.